Welcome to RC Circuits. Let's call this one Stability and VMAX VMIN calculations. Uh, we could have called this one something like what happens to an RC circuit with a square wave when the time is less than 5 tau, but that kind of makes for a long title. Here we go. So here's our RC circuit, simple series RC circuit. We've got a square wave now instead of our DC supply and our switch is in the previous video, but we're still going to use these two formulas VC equals V final minus V final minus V initial E to the negative time over RC. RC is we also know is equal to tau and that's both those units are time and tau are in seconds. Okay, so if tau is equal to RC, and we know that a capacitor will fully charge in 5 tau. We know for a square wave, our time on is going to be our charge time, and our time off is going to be the discharge time for the capacitor. Uh, also, we for, for this example, we're going to do a square wave, so our time on is equal to our time off. It's a true square wave. So the big question is, okay, what happens when time on is less than the 5 tau? Um, so obviously the capacitor is not going to be able to charge all the way, and it's also not going to be able to discharge all the way. We know that the capacitor is starting at 0 volts, so where is it going to end up? And we're going to call that uh, stabilization, and we're going to guess that it's going to take about 5 tau to stabilize. So our capacitor, let's just kind of draw in something here. So our capacitor is going to start here at zero, and you know it might charge up to somewhere right, right here, depending on what that tau is. Then it's going to discharge down, and the next cycle it might discharge a little bit more, discharge down. Okay, still not stable yet because we're seeing different voltages at these different peaks. And then we'll charge up and discharge. And let's say let's say it starts to get up like this. It's crossed the five volt mark. This is what's kind of neat about these is they'll discharge. Once they're stabilized, they discharge and charge an equal amount above and below this center. So in this case, I've got 10 here. So if it was 10 volts, once this signal is stabilized or the capacitor is stabilized, it'll charge and discharge above and below equal amounts above the five, five volts. And it would just, that's what it would be for until we shut it off. Okay, so an, an RC circuit with a square wave generator and a 50% duty cycle we want to know or we maybe we'll try to predict how long or how many cycles will it take for that capacitor voltage to stabilize by stabilizing i, I mean that it's going to charge up and then charge and discharge around an equal amount above and below the average voltage of the generator so again that's for 50 percent duty cycle uh, of the square wave generator and so we're going to predict that it's going to take around 5 tau for that to stabilize. So then we can put it in terms of our uh, cycles. Number of cycles should be equal to 5 tau divided by period. Okay, so now we, we have a formula that's, that we think is going to represent our stabilized or our amount of number of cycles until stabilization or time to stabilization. We know how long it'll take for the circuit to stabilize. So the big question or the next question now is, okay, it's stable, but what is the Vmax? What is the max voltage and what is the min voltage? Right now we're going to predict that that is um, charging and discharging equal amounts on above and below the average generator voltage, so right in the middle there. Um, but what is the Vmax and what is the Vmin? What is it going to charge up to? What is it going to discharge down to? 
Okay, so we're going to use our capacitor charge formula again, and we want to get things in terms of, you know, we, we're now getting in terms of Vmax and Vmin. And so our final charge voltage, Vmax, should be equal to Vc. Our generator voltage is going to the, be the V final. Like, what is that capacitor trying to charge to? And if it was just had all the time in the world, it would eventually it would charge right up to that. Um, but we're again, we're working with a signal that's got not enough time, so we're less than five tau. Our V in is our equivalent. If you think of that capacitor charging and discharging around that middle part of the waveform, our V in initial is our V min. We also know that the V min is equal to V gen minus V max. Uh, that one might be a little bit confusing, but if you think about it uh, and you have a, like a 10 volt signal and you have a capacitor signal that's charging up to and down to around the center voltage, you can now take the V gen minus the V max because that distance from the center went up that much to V max and that same distance should go down to V min. So that therefore you can now put V min in terms of V gen minus V max. And if that's confusing, then draw draw out like a little test waveform for yourself. Say, okay, my, my generator is 10 volts. I know my capacitor is going to um, go back and forth around 5 volts. Say it goes up 1 volt, right? So it goes up to 6 volts and then it goes down. It should go down the equal amount, so it goes down to 4 volts. So if I look back at my uh, formula that I derived, 10 volts uh, minus 6 volts should be the 4 volts, which is the V min. So that's where that V min equals V gen minus V max uh, formula comes from. Uh, my V initial uh, is equal to my V min, so now I can substitute that in. And I get this, I, now if I substitute all that stuff into the capacitor charge formula, I should get V max is equal to V gen minus the quantity V gen minus the quantity, which would have been V min right there, which is now substituted in for V gen minus V max, uh, E to the negative time over RC. You can see that we can distri distribute things through and kind of do the math and kind of try to simplify it a little bit. And we end up with the V max equals V gen minus V max E to the negative time over RC. We get the Vmax is on the same side, so we're going to add a Vmax on the right side. That brings it over, the, and we've got Vmax plus Vmax e to the negative time over RC equals Vgen. Factor out a Vmax, which leaves us with 1 plus e to the negative time over RC equals Vgen. Divide that by that off that side, and we get it div divided onto the other side. Leaves us with our final Vmax equals Vgen divided by 1 plus e to the negative time over RC. Okay, so we've got three basic formulas where we've derived a formula that's going to describe how long it's going to take for this circuit voltages to stabilize. So the, in terms of number of cycles, uh, so the number of cycles equals five tau divided by period. We derived the Vmax formula uh, from the capacitor charge formula, Vmax equals Vgen divided by 1 plus e to the negative time over RC. We also derive the Vmin formula just from looking at what we know is going to happen with the um, charge and discharge. Vmin should be equal to Vgen minus Vmax. All right, let's see if we can prove our formulas or test our formulas out and make sure that they're working the way that we think that they should be. And so we're going to run a hypothetical here. I've got a generator set to 0 to 10 volts. I'm going to call um, at a frequency of 1 kHz. I'm going to list that R is equal to 1 K ohm and C is equal to 1 microfarad. So if we look at our number of cycles to stabilization, and um, we put those numbers in, we get five cycles. So it should take five cycles after that um, square wave generator is turned on for this capacitor to charge and then stabilize and be charging and discharging around the five volt 
average of the generator. If we put those numbers also into our Vmax formula, we get a Vmax of 6.225 volts peak. And our Vmin is looks like it should be 3.775 volts peak. And if we take that average, it should average right around uh, 5 volts. So now let's look. We've got our numbers calculated off of our, our new formulas. Let's go ahead and run it old school, run some cycles, uh, calculate some numbers, and um, look and see what we get doing it a different way and see if the end results match up with our new way. And so we've got our trusted VC capacitor charge formula, V final uh, minus V final minus V initial E to the negative time over tau. Okay, so at time equals zero milliseconds, we know that VC is zero. Everybody's zero, right? And so if we take our 1K hertz frequency, um, invert that, we know that one cycle should be one millisecond. And we're looking at the time on now is 500 microseconds or 0.5 milliseconds. And we can run that formula, run those numbers into our v, v capacitor voltage charge formula. And we should get, it looks like point or 3.935 volts. So it's gonna charge up to 3.935 volts in the first half cycle or the first time on. So we can put a little number there, 3.9, so almost four. So it looks like we should get something like this. Now, at time one millisecond, so the second half of that is going to be a discharge discharge cycle. Um, our formula looks like this. We're trying to discharge down to zero, V final zero, V final zero. Our V initial was the 3.935 that we just charged to. And then we've got our E, and we've got... Um, 0.5 milliseconds of discharge time divided by our tau. So we should discharge down to 2.387 volts. 2.8, somewhere around here. Right there. Do the same thing. We're just running, punching those numbers in. Our initial is now what, our t what it was in the last previous time. So this is a charge cycle to 1.5 milliseconds, and we charge up to 5.382. 5.382. So we've crossed the we've crossed the 5 volt mark in the first two cycles. At time one, or at the next two, this should be two milliseconds. We get a discharge voltage of 3.265 volts, 3.6265 volts, right here. Okay, so in the previous slide, we calculated out two cycles worth of voltages. Now I went ahead and built this in Excel and set it up and verified that the first two cycles were matching and then ran it all out to eight milliseconds so that I could graph it and we could take a look at the capacitor charge waveform. And here we observe at five milliseconds, so we calculated our stabilization formula, calculated that we should be stable in five cycles. So out here, five cycles at five milliseconds, we're seeing a minimum voltage or a VC min of 3.74 volts. And our calculated using our new formulas, we calculated a V min of 3.775 volts. And so we can see already that, that we're, it's 1%. So it's basically stabilized. And you can look at the waveform and see that it's, it's uh, charging and discharging equally above and below the five volts. Now the V max at that point is um, at the 5.5 uh, milliseconds is 6.209. That's also within 1% of the calculated 6.225 volts peak. 
And when we look out to eight milliseconds, we see that now that number is looking super, super close to our calculated V-min. We've got a 3.774 volts compared to a, a, the calculated 3.775 volts. So really, really close. And the calculated Vmax at the 7.5 millisecond mark is 6.223. Our calculated was 6.225. So I bet if we calculated this out like another few milliseconds even, or even, um, you know, probably just two more cycles, you'd see that the Vmax and Vmin would actually become our actual calculated Vmax and Vmin from our derived formulas. And so basically we've got two sets of tools here. We can always go back and use our VC equals V final, our capacitor charge formula that we're used to. Or now we've got three new formulas derived from that formula so that we can quickly like figure out how long is it going to take for these voltages to stabilize and then what is the new Vmax and the Vmin going to be with these new calculated formulas.